Hey, it's Nooch, and we're here today to talk about the top 10 things that LEGO Legacy Heroes Unboxed needs to improve in order to be a better game. Now, let's get a couple things clear off the bat. This is not a bashing video on LEGO Legacy Heroes. Nooch plays it every day. There are a lot of great designs. It's a really fun game. It's a lot of fun farming the characters. The graphics are really well designed. The events are put, put together really well. You know, we've got a lot of activity. We have the daily events. We've got, uh, you know, uh, events that they put in the game like Alumni Days for uh, for Bat Lord Basil here. We've got the daily challenges. You know, the, the game is well designed. You know, Pip Town here that we all go to every day is, is put together really well. The campaigns are designed well. But we want to talk about the things that the game could use in order to become better. And we hope the developers are listening. And what we're also going to do is Nooch is going to host a podcast, or it's not a podcast, but a, a live stream tomorrow night on Thursday night. And we're going to put it up on the channel. It's going to be 8 or 9 p.m. Not sure yet. But we're going to talk more about, you know, the state of the game and what they need to improve or what, what changes need to come to the game to make it better. So we'll give you a chance to have a voice as well on that live stream while we play through Bridge Edition. So, before we get into the top 10, let's give an honorable mention and we'll talk about why Nooch doesn't consider this a top 10. A lot of people, when Nooch asked around, said that their number one thing was increased drop rates in the game. And while Nooch understands this, let's go ahead, we're going to go ahead and farm Kai here. And, you know, this is random. Maybe we'll, we'll have a really good drop rate in here, not sure. Um, there's one out of one. And so... Here's the thing with drop rates, and there's a couple. So yeah, it was like 25, 30% there, and that's about normal. The thing about drop rates, there's a couple of things. One is drop rates impact the rest of the game. So if the drop rates increased, they'd have to increase the coin rates or everybody be complaining about the amount of coin they got. They had to increase the scroll, scroll rates or you'd have to be everybody be complaining about the amount of scrolls they have. It impacts the, the pace of the events. It impacts the pace of the gear challenges. The drop rates impact the entire game. And generally speaking, with Gotcha Games, which is what this is, and that's G-A-T-C-H-A, -A, that's just a collection game, this is a pretty average, if not slightly better than average, drop rate for that type of game. So it's really built into the game that the drop rates are somewhere between 20 to 30%. And that's how it's going to be. It's not going to change. So while Nooch knows a lot of people are concerned with it, if you're going to be playing the game, you just kind of have to get used to the drop rates. That's where they are. So we're not going to pursue that as a top 10. But let's jump in to number 10. So number 10 is, nope, not here in Arena. But number 10, we're going to go to, well, let's go to our profile. Can we go to our profile? Nooch's name and game is Silver Division Ruffian. We need to have be able to select our own names or make our own names for the game. You know, Nooch's name needs to be Nooch or maybe Nooch Division Ruffian or Silver Nooch Ruffian, something like that. But Nooch needs to be, have some input as to what his name is. The, the naming system is really creative and interesting. You you pick from three drop downs and it gives you your name. That's great. But we need to be able to put our own names. Our identities are important to playing this game, any game. Your identity and who you are is important to who you are in the game, who you relate to, how you relate to other players. And yeah, we have Discord and we have, um, we got Reddit, we have Facebook, we have all sorts of other places we can interact with each other and talk about what our real names are. But at the end of the day, it's really hard for someone to manage a, a guild with players that they don't recognize. And they have to start tying one name. To, people have to know that Nucha Silver Division Ruffian. If we're climbing an arena, we don't want to hit somebody else. We got to know what their different name is. It's really important to that. And Nucha knows the developers have said that the reason for the naming convention is because the Lego doesn't want to have offensive names in there. And Nucha gets that for sure. Nucha gets that. But here's the thing: Nucha plays Lego Star Wars battles, and everybody picks their own name in that. That's a Lego game. We're allowed to pick our own names. Hopefully this doesn't go in the opposite direction and Lego clamps down on that. But it gives an identity to the players. It's important. It would help your marketing. It, people for sure have avoided this game because they look at it and say, well, I don't get to pick my own name. Why would I play this? 
So let us pick our own names. That's number 10. Number nine, um, free training. Let's go look at free training here. So we can go into free training and we can play, you know, any of these, any of these battles here. We can battle, Nooch go to the last one, which is level 50 characters. So Nooch is going to battle. He's got his Ninjago's up here. But you don't get to pick the team you're battling against. So, you know, this is a could be a really nice sandbox mode. Looks like this is the exact same team every time because Nooch just finished this earlier today. Nooch doesn't do a lot of the free training, but somebody brought it up, so Nooch checked it out. This is the same free training team from earlier in the day. So free training is nice because you get to try out your teams and understand how your teams work. But free training could really be enhanced if Nooch was able to go into, or anybody was able to go in and in the beginning menu, uh, you're able to select not only your team, but select the opponent's team. Put like the top 10 to 20 arena teams that are out there in here as selections for for this game mode. It's a really nice game mode. It could be a nice sandbox mode, a nice testing out of your teams, but it needs to have the option of choosing your opponent's team. Maybe not piece by piece. I'm new to understand that can be a really tough development, but you should be able to put in like a bunch of top arena teams in there as, as choices for teams and cycle it out every three months or something like it. So give us options to pick to battle against in the free training. Number eight, better gear management. So we have all these gears that we're farming and looking at, um, and we understand that to make up these, these bits, we need these other pieces, we need like a plan, and we need other plans. So we understand how all that goes, but it's really hard to see what comes together to make what, where you're going with the, with the gear, what's already in, in Nooch's inventory. You know, to see your gear inventory, we'd probably have to go down to level one of these level one characters. So let's go to Firefighter Ash. We can see the inventory we have just for the stuff that Firefighter Ash needs. So we have seven basic Flintox. We have six basic binoculars one. We have a 130 basic scarf one. And so it would really be nice to have like an inventory where we could see our gear. And then also a place where we could exchange gear. You know, maybe Nooch could exchange 30 of his basic scarfs for one or for five basic chops, something like that, where you're trading in gear and would actually benefit, honestly, the marketing of the game and the income of the game. Because if I'm if Nooch is trading 30 of these for five of these, well, Nooch just kind of traded away a lot of value there. So if we had those in the game, and we could also use it in guilds where you can request gear, but that's a discussion for in a minute. So a little bit of gear improvement, and along the lines of gear improvement, number seven, let's improve the use of brick separators, please. So we got our brick separators. We have to use one every day. Nooch has talked to people. Some people have as many as 200 or even more saved. Some people use them every day. Yeah, we can go get gear. So here we see we can get uh, we can get the helmet or the crab, but until we actually drop the brick separator, we can't really see exactly what that gear is or who it might apply to. You know, I'm not sure who needs that helmet. I'm not sure who needs that crab. We're gonna take a look at a way to do that in a second. But the other thing is, give us a little bit more um, options in here for like better drops. So for coin, it's always 250. How about a one in 10 chance for it to be a thousand? and a one in 30 chance for it to be like 20,000. 20,000 coin once every two weeks for players is not gonna break this game at all. That's gonna help you very minimally, but if you can just put some more options in there for stuff to come with the brick separators, and let's go take a little bit closer look at what Nooch is talking about with, with the brick separators. So here's Black Tron Dwayne, and Nooch is leveling him up because he wants to show how to uh, maneuver through we're going to go through the Ghost Master event, right? So we can see here with Blacktron Day, we need these lofty skateboard ones. We have to scroll all the way to the end to see that we can go to El Dorado Fortress to get to use that brick separator there. But what we don't see, what we don't see is that here's El Dorado Fortress. We can drop it. Let's drop it right now. Boom. We got an elixir. That's a nice reward from the brick separator. Nooch agrees with that. But what is that banana um, plant or banana bit there? What does that go to? Who needs that? Well, we can't tell from here. And Nooch will tell you who it goes to. It goes to Locust right now. It's actually a really important... Um, let's find out where it is. Yeah, right here. Is it right here? Right here? Again, no, it's the blue one. So it's right here. It's actually a gear six bit. 
So it's actually a really important bit. But how would Nooch know? Let's craft this so we can see that. Uh, yeah, yeah, we get we we're crafted. Come on. I don't want to keep. Well, we're not going to keep wasting that. We got too many of these pieces. So the bottom line is, even if you had it crafted, there's nothing that tells you to go farm that in El Dorado Fortress. Nooch wouldn't know that that bit is available as a complete bit in El Dorado Fortress if he hadn't gotten lucky by farming the skateboards with with uh, Dwayne, with Black Tron Dwayne. So give us a little more info. Let us know that some where those bit is. Hey, here's where the bit is farmable in El Dorado Fortress, or it's not farmable. Give us the same choice as you give us for the regular gear, for the pieces and the plans. We really need to see that, and then give us a little bit more rewards on the coin. Maybe give a that that random. Hey, I might hit more coin, or hey, I might hit more gems, or or uh, what was your what's your thing hitting there? The elixirs. Hey, I might hit a green elixir every now and then. One out of a hundred, I hit a green elixir. Give us some more ability to use that because that'll make brick straight separators that much better and more and a more interesting part of the game. Number six, localized arena payouts. Now. We're told that they're working on this, that the developers are working to develop localized payouts. Right now, everyone who plays LEGO Legacy Heroes pays out at the same time. That means for Nooch at 7 p.m., when it gets around to 6 p.m., everybody in the top 10 is just beating the crud out of each other. We're trying to stay in the top 10. We are, you're trying to battle somebody, but they're already engaged because there are 10,000 people in a shard and they all have the same payout. Please, please work toward the localized payout because the thing is that these rewards are so specified. Those top three rewards, uh, well, well, really the top reward compared with the top 10, compared with the top 50, those gems ramp up really hard at the top, but it's hard to get there because you have to have not even skill. It's not even that you might be the most skilled player or be, be the best player at managing your team. You might just run into the fact that there's 10 other people playing at the same time and you can't get to number one, period. So please fix, put the localized arena times in there. They are working on it, so hopefully it'll be here soon. Number five, we need more of the classic Lego, Lego movie characters. Uh, we know that there are more, you know, of the public IPs coming. There's a, there's an, uh, a water one, which people are speculating might be SpongeBob. We're not really sure. But you know, there are classic heroes. Somebody mentioned Bill and Mary, the original Lego classic family. You could have a classic, you could have a family um, faction. But what about Lego, the, the Lego movie? I mean, that's kind of a big deal. You know, it's got like a 95% on Rotten Tomatoes. People love that movie. And you've got, you got Emmett, you got Wild Style, Lord Business in there. There's a lot of characters you could bring in from the Lego movie that could be a really fun faction to have in this game and use. So bring in more of those Lego, classic Lego style characters for us to use along with the public IPs that we're offering, which we'll see Ghostbusters was last, we'll see what's next. You know, the public ones will bring in people that haven't been lifetime Lego fans, like Nooch, quite honestly. Um, but the Lego offerings of those classic characters will keep involved your, your players that have been lifelong Lego lovers. So bring those classic characters and bring more of those characters. Number four, and this is supposed to be working on. We know we have one improvement coming to guilds, but guilds need to be improved across the board. So we know that there's an improvement coming where, where you'll be able to see in your guild who has the most points for the guild um, accomplishments every day. Whoop, we clicked out of that. So if we go down here to, well, can we even see it? No, we can't even see it. Uh, new, the, is it under quest? Yeah, guild quest. So this guild quest should be showing for the top contributors and how many points people are getting every day in the guild shop after the uh, base of the brick pace with that new patch that's coming in after base of the brick pace. The brick base of you know, you know what I mean. Um, but man, guilds need so many other improvements. Here's one. How about make it so the leader can reassign the guild to another leader if they quit the game? New just talked to so many people that are in a guild where the leader quit. And now they don't know what to do because there's no tie to anybody. In part because they can't attach to somebody else's name and know who's playing. But it's really rough to be in a guild playing and your leader quits and they have no way to turn that guild over to somebody else without contacting the developers. And that's a ticket and it takes time and effort. It's just a mess. There should be like co-leaders. There should be sergeants and privates and whatever you want to call it. There should be ranks in the guild. There needs to be requirements. You need to be able to say, hey, your awesomeness needs to be at least 250, 
250,000, 500,000, you whatever, you need to get all your uh, all your energy in every day, whatever. There need to be that in guild. Um, we got the guild shop there. That's fine. Uh, there was one other thing Nooch wanted to mention, improving guilds. There should be gear trade. Nooch should be able to request some fish, some two-dot fish, while somebody else requests a different piece of gear we can share with each other. And da 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 da, -da. Announcements. There need to be announcements. And chat. You know, this chat. We get the announcements of pe what people are doing, right? Um, but... We can't respond to it. We can't give it like a star or a thumbs up. We can't do anything. We can't chat. We can't say, hey, man, go in here. We can't, the leaders can't give an announcement. Hey, everybody, we need you to jump in and play this. We need you to refresh your sharing because the hero sharing, if you didn't know, um, you have to reshare your hero when you get new stars or levels on them or they won't share. So you see a lot of 50, 55. These guys might be at a higher level now and have forgotten to reshare their heroes. So we need to have these things available in guilds. And we really need them available because the next three things that Nooch is going to talk about would require more guild management. And, and these next three things, the top three, the top three things this game needs are really, really important to the development of the game. And without these things coming in, or the, uh, the line of sight into them coming into the game, players will eventually leave because there's not much to do. So let's start with number three. And it's already being worked on. It's the raid. So the, the number one thing going on with this game right now is we have a great start. We have all these things developed, the events, the graphics. We have all these minifigure heroes. We have the different factions. We have lots of fun things going on with the game. The raids will be the first step to allowing players to use multiple teams in one event. To be able to go in there with the Ghostbusters because you need the Ghostbusters or to go with a different team. You know, right now... We're so limited. Yeah, we need the city heroes for a weekly event. We need uh, we need our space heroes for, uh, I thought it was today, but it's not. We need the space heroes for Gorwell's Great Escape to get gear. We need tanks and healers and supports for the daily challenges. We get that. But those aren't competitive events. You know, the raid is a competitive thing. You can go in with the raid as a guild. You can say, our guild finished first. Our guild is at the top of the raids. We're getting more gear than other people. We can re recruit people to the guild because we're we're crushing the raid. And it gives you a chance to try different team combinations. You might try a pirate team, but you're bringing somebody from your Ninjago team because they have a little bit of synergy that makes sense with the team. The, this upcoming raid that is being worked on, in this, we're hoping comes out in November. It was supposed to come in October, but it was delayed. Is going to be the first step toward allowing us to use this entire roster of minifigures to accomplish things in the game and to try creative teams. We hope that we're not just going there with a pirate team and a Jago team. We're hoping we have to mix and match to really do some fun things and see what's in there in the raid. So that's step one, and that is number three, and is already being worked on for the top three. Number two, we need some guild-styled events. So we know that we have we, we need work on the on, on the guilds in general, and we talked about that. But once that is done, and once the raid is out, we need something that the guild can do together. We need an event that is constant and going on, or or constantly comes back once a month. Um, something like a brick expedition, like a guild style brick expedition, where you need your entire guild to participate. You can track um, participation. You can track achievements. You know who's who's there. You know what characters you need to work. Who do you need to farm? Oh man, well we need Hot Dog Man for this new for this new guild uh, for this new guild quest. So everybody go farm Hot Dog Man for a month to get him up to as high as you can get him. And then you're working together, being a team, being a part of a team, is so important to a mobile game. It is important also to other games too. But a mobile game, people join a mobile game. To be part of a community. It's the same reason people go on Facebook or Reddit or Twitter or Discord or anywhere. We come to our phone, we come to our mobile games, our, our pad, to be part of a community. We want to be part of a team. We want to feel like we're part of a team and we're doing something together. So we need guild-styled events to promote teamwork, but to do that, they've got to upgrade the guild shop first and give us announcements and, and everything we talked about before. So that is number two to come after the raid. 
But the number one thing this game needs, the number one thing, and we don't have a screen to go to, because there's nothing similar to this right now. Nooch has seen in these games before that a direct player versus player mode, not arena, but a full roster versus full roster mode. I have to use my full roster to, to field five or six defense teams. You have to use your full roster to field your defense teams. Then we have to go at each other on offense. And then we get ranked on a weekly basis based on where we fell, who we defeated, how cleanly we beat those opponents. Um, yeah, we, we need this game. That is the first thing that the developers should work on after completing raids. Give us a player versus player format where we don't have to rely on a guild. You love the teamwork. But you love to see how you perform against other people that play the same game. It'll give you motivation to farm new characters, find creative combinations for teams, really understand what defeats a pirate team or what defeats a castle team. That player versus player mode and ranking and leaderboard would be a major boost to this game. You'd bring back players that had left. You would engage the player base like you'd never seen before. And honestly, for uh, for Gameloft, you, you'd make a bunch of money on that. You really would. Because people love mono e mono player versus player, my roster against yours, then rank me based on how we did. People love that stuff, player versus player. So bring that to the game. There is our top 10 things that LEGO Legacy Heroes Unbox needs to do to improve their game. Nooch is going to have a live stream tomorrow night. We'll put it up on the channel. So make sure that you subscribe to the channel so you can get in there and you get alerts for everything and you see everything that's going on. So come to the live stream. Give your input. Nooch is going to listen. We're going to talk while we play through Brickspedition Day 7 tomorrow night. And, and while you're getting ready for that and... You know, while you're you're maybe thinking of your own ideas for the for some of the things that Lego Legacy Heroes Unbox needs to improve, remember Nooch too good.